Our guest speaker today is an alumnus of UP Los Paños, where he earned his BS Agriculture degree in 1969 as Magna Cum Laude. He is also an alumnus of the Kellogg School of Management at Northwestern University in the U.S., where he graduated in 1979 with an MBA. It's also there where he met his classmate and co-founder of YKK Philippines, Mr. Katahiro Yoshida. So for your students, please use this as a moment to take a good look at your classmates and whisper the words future business partner to each other so that you may manifest your futures beginning today. Before I digress, today's guest speaker is currently president and CEO of Toyota Batanga City, Toyota Camarina Sur, and Toyota Alba. He's also joined today by his wife, Valerie. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give a warm round of applause to Mr. Francis Sinone. So this morning, or this afternoon, I will share with you my experiences and my learnings on niche marketing. Now, to give you a brief background, I will basically dwell on my experiences and uh, the things I learned when I started YKK Philippines 46 years ago. Right after graduating from my uh, graduate school in 1972, I proceeded back to the Philippines and in less than three years, while I was uh, still connected with uh, Citibank, I was a corporate banker. Basically, 80% of my portfolio were agricultural companies, agribusiness companies, very large agribusiness companies. So in 1975, I got a little letter from uh, a classmate of mine who was Japanese, as mentioned by Professor Renan, Kadahiro Yoshida, the one and only son of the founder of YKK in Japan. And uh, he came over, looked at uh, the possibilities, and offered to be my, his partner, or we offered each other a partnership, which ultimately became YKK Philippines. So it's a joint venture between the Laurel family and the largest uh, zipper manufacturer in the world, which is still the biggest. For my last count, it's about 45% of the global market. In any case, uh, we uh, started business back in 77, and we opened our doors to uh, uh, we opened our doors in October of uh, 1978. Next, next slide, now, please. So we opened our business in 78, and it was the most modern zipper manufacturing plant in the Philippines. Today, I don't think there's any other company operating except YKK. How that came to be is another uh, lecture, if you, want, if you don't mind me not proceeding with it. And I just want you to know that we did not have any BOI incentives because the main objective was to manufacture zippers for the domestic market. So at that time, there was still no pesas, the export zones. There was only one EPSA, export processing zone, in Marineles, Bataan. In 1995, the PESA law was passed, which allowed export companies to locate in these zones all over the Philippines. And most of the zones that were established were in Region 4, Cavite and Laguna. None in Batangas yet. Next slide. So the objective then was to manufacture and sell zippers in the domestic market. So the, as you can see, 
the ratio is 90 to 10. 90% export, I mean domestic, and 10% export. Next slide. And uh, as it turned out, it was the opposite. 85% to 90%, uh, depending on the season, of our demand was export. And only 10, possibly even 50, was domestic. So from the get-go, we were in, we were wrong-footed right away. Next slide. So comes the topic of niche marketing. So as you can see there, Philip Cutler, who happened to be my professor in marketing, uh, as you can see, he defines uh, niche marketing as follows. Niche as a portion of the market in which possess homogeneous needs and characteristics, and the latter are not covered by the general offer to the market. A niche market is a group with a narrower, usually it's a small market whose needs are not being served. So, as you can see, next slide please. As you can see, we were in a quandary. So what I did was, I did uh, my own quiet research. And number one conclusion, the product was not acceptable. The product that we manufactured in Santo Tomas, Batangas was the nylon zipper. The domestic demand was a metal zipper made out of aluminum. So right there and then, we were in a big, big hole. Next slide, please. So after I did my research, I discovered that there was a small, not really small, very, very specialized market that was focused only on exports. And the good news was the demand for the ex coming from the exporters was the same product that we were manufacturing. However, the nylon zippers that I produced were mostly for trousers and ladies' dresses. So I told my, my business partners, we got to do something. Because if we don't, we just pile up inventory and money will get stuck in inventory and before you know it, you're dead. So upon reviewing further, the bigger market, or the large portion of the market was jackets and zippers for uh, bags, and later on jeans. So we had to reconfigure the entire factory all over again. So we identified immediately the specific customers and their specific requirements and volumes. Based on that, we came up with an engineering plan to manufacture those specific products. Next slide. Now, in the 80s up to 1995, the global uh, garment uh, industry was regulated by way of quotas. So Philippines and a few other, and many other countries were given quotas, and these quotas were regulated, or administered rather, by the Department of Trade and Industry. And uh, it, the particular uh, agency within the DTI that handled this was called the Garment Textile Export Board, GTEB. This system was already in place when we opened in the 70s, but it became particularly more active as each year went by. And it went on until 1995, when the global export quota system was removed. Next time. So as you could 
as you can read, the global market basically looks at very high quality accessories. I'm not just talking about ordinary uh, products, but basically all across the line. So we basically filled in a need, a special need. It's called a quality zipper. And the biggest advantage of, uh, that we had was we had the most famous brand that was in demand at the time. And just to, as you can see, a zipper will only cost about 3 to 5% of the total cost of the garment, but it's 99% uh, of the utility of the garment. But nasira a zipper, that's it. You can't wear your dress, you cannot wear your, your pants, and your bag is always open, but you don't want that to happen. So that was our basic selling point because we were the most expensive pinapahan. Why? Quality. As the saying goes, you pay for the quality that you that you get. You pay cheap, you get cheap quality. You pay high price, you get good quality. So that. Uh, basically was my main objective to address the export market and to produce the best quality zipper and to be competitively costed. So we continue to invest in equipment and we had uh, naturally the, the, most we had the best people in town, the Batangas, the Kami mga patambiyan niyo, masisipag kami, masigasig kami, maabilidad, madiskarte. Next slide, please. So, in the process of achieving our niche marketing program, so by the way, niche marketing was something that uh, was initiated no less than the great Philip Calder. When I was introduced to this topic, when I was already in my last year in the graduate school, it was a brand new thing, back in 1971. And uh, I basically borrowed a page from the book of the great Carter and applied it here, live. That was the laboratory that I had. And I gambled, and it worked. So, how did I go about applying it? Who are, uh, who are uh, graduate school students here on management? Can you raise your hand? <laughs> and who among you are taking marketing at this time? Okay. I come from a very old school where in my time, there were only four Bs in marketing. I understand that there are a few more Bs that have been added. But I go back always to the basics. Because that's my mantra. Even today, as we speak, I address issues, problems, challenges by going back to the basics. Pagka ako may problema, may mga issue ako, I always go back to the basics. And it works, even in the most difficult circumstances. Going back to the basics always works. So I speak from experience. I'm not a teacher. I am a boss. You know? And as the boss, I like to get things done. And I recall giving a few years back, I think two, two or three years ago, when I addressed uh, the graduating students of uh, UPMD. I congratulated them and I said, well done. You have now achieved what a small percentage of the young people would want to have a UP diploma. However, your happy days 
in the university are about to end, and you will now be entering the jungle. And when you were a student, I said, you only have to do is pass your midterms, submit all your donor requirements, and have hope uh, for the best to pass the finals. However, in the real world, every day is finals day. Every day. Without exception. And no less than myself, I go through finals every day. And I love it. Why? I love a good fight. Secondly, we are graduates of the University of the Philippines, where you are tested with regularity. So, and I can, I can talk that way because I'm, I, I'm home. I'm home at the University. So, we go back to the basics. Product, place, price, Promotion. Next slide. Product, the best zipper in the world. Not only in the Philippines, in the world. Two, place, the huge Philippine market. And the product that I produced was particularly in demand by the garment export industry. Three, promotion. I have the flexibility in providing custom-made orders. Custom-made. Why do you call it custom-made? You think a zipper is a zipper, period. No. A zipper has a multitude of colors. From white to green to red and all the values Shades of red, of green, and blue, and whatever you have. Plus, we had a casting plant. Very expensive, but we could do anything you wanted for as long as you paid for it. So that was my biggest advantage. My competitors could only produce the basic colors. We have the capability of doing any color. That was my little trick. And that is all because of technology. So YKK not only was the best brand, or the biggest brand, rather, but also the best because we had the ability, the technical ability to be able to serve the customers from the colors to the Little details in the cooler, the one that goes up and down. And finally, my price was extremely competitive. And my biggest selling point was, again, we go back to place. You don't have to buy your zippers overseas. All you do is you pick up your phone, you call me, I send my salesperson, we confirm the order, he comes back, in one week, it's delivered. If you import the zippers from Hong Kong, Japan, whatever, it will take you one month. I save you three weeks. And in business, especially in the global export market, time is gold. Time is of the essence. So we had that distinct advantage of being a local manufacturer with a global manufacturing specialty. You know? And we did that uh, consistently until 1995. Next slide, please. So our target markets were, as you can see on the screen, jeans, jackets, children's wear, and sports and athletic bands. I'll tell you a little story. When we offered our jeans, zippers, our brass zippers, to Levi's, you will not believe that the Filipino, Filipino engineers were particularly very difficult to talk to. 
wala silang bilib sa Pilipino KYKK. So I said, our standards and our quality are regularly tested and audited by an independent group in YKK. We have a huge testing plant, testing laboratory in Hong Kong. They would randomly have us send batches. And this applies not only to the Philippines, but all the YKKs all over the world. For one simple reason, quality assurance. And as a matter of fact, we were one of the early birds in having ourselves ISO certified. We are ISO certified 9000 quality management company. We had, if I'm not mistaken, four ISO certification. Why? Because we wanted to attain not only the certification for purposes of presenting ourselves, but internally we used it to improve our quality with regularity. Quality, quality, quality. So we had, uh, of course, uh, jackets, huge market, children's dresses, another huge market, and sports and athletic bags. Next slide, please. So in 1995, we saw the end of the global export quota system. And in 1997, we saw the Asian uh, financial crisis, where we saw a lot of, number one, big banks in the Philippines collapse, shut down, gone forever. And naturally, the, the global market, especially in Asia, went on reverse. And we were not an exception to the rule. We suffered. Next slide, please. So, when we saw our export market disappear, because everybody, because this uh, business of garment export is very sensitive to the cost of labor, and in uh, 1995, our neighbors up in the north, China, became the global uh, vehicle. So they sucked up practically everything on the export market, only because they were the cheapest labor producer in the world. Doesn't, doesn't apply anymore. Mas mahal na ngayon ang China as far as labor costs is concerned. But that's another story. So we had to look for an alternative within our market that we could attend to. And uh, fortunately, at that time, the uh, ASEAN free trade uh, market opened up, the AFTA, no? the Asian free trade agreement, which basically you could within the ASEAN, buy goods and services duty-free. So we reviewed our costings. Next slide, please. We reviewed our costings and we found out that the most expensive part of our uh, operations was textiles and casting. So we basically right-sized. We did right sizing, or we call it downsizing in, a, in, a, in another way. So we used to make the textile where the teeth of the zipper is attached to, tela. No? Fortunately, in 1995, YKK put up a huge filament, uh, polyester filament plant, the exact same factory that they had in Japan, in Indonesia. And they basically designed the factory so that it would serve the ASEAN. 
So from 1996, 97, we started, uh, we uh, basically shut down our textile plant and imported our finished gray cloth. So we come na uh, Filipino tela na hindi pa kinukula yan. Undyed textile. We shifted from that and we immediately brought our costs down. Simultaneously, we also stopped importing our metal cast. Uh, we stopped our uh, metal castings operations because at all a much much cheaper or price rather from Indonesia through the APTA. So we still had the flexibility of uh, providing all of this fancy looking uh, castings but made in Indonesia. And finally, to be able to continuously be competitive, we upgraded and invested in special textile uh, dyeing equipment. The heart of a zipper factory is its dyeing department. This is just a play of words. You live and die with that department. If you don't know how to dye, you die. And fortunately, I had good chemical engineers whom I had uh, trained. Because dyeing is almost like a it's a skill. It, we had a computer. Uh, we had computers that could basically tell you the mix of the dye that you will have to put together when you color the zipper. But at the end of the day, the real secret is still the human eye and the human hand. So don't believe that everything will be AI. Don't believe in that. If you believe an old man like me. No? The, the human eye and the human hand are irreplaceable. So we invested in this new equipment so that we could still focus on that special market that we had. Even if the market had shrunk, another market came out See, that's the beauty of business. As one dies, another just crops up. If you can see it as it comes up, you learn how to read the market, anticipate the market, and react. The name of the game is anticipation. And at the same time, if you do not have the ability to anticipate, you should have the ability to react immediately. And that's where entrepreneurship comes in. Entrepreneurship, entrepreneur basically can smell an opportunity while it's still popping up in the horizon. If you wait, you will be left behind. So you must take the risk. Entrepreneurship is not for everybody. That's what I kept on telling uh, my colleagues back in the time when uh, they asked me that question. What do you think, Francis? Do you think it's a good idea to put together an entrepreneurship program at uh, the College of Economics? I said, yes, it is good. But you know, you cannot teach people to become entrepreneurs. Entrepreneurs are not something that is not something you just teach. It should come from within. It's very hard to explain it. I never dreamed that I'd be an entrepreneur. I was just suddenly exposed to a situation and I jumped into the blue lagoon and I said, come here on high water, I live and die with my decision. That's basically entrepreneurship. Dapat may dibdib ka. May dibdib ka. Malakas ang loob mo. And you work 
And if there were 25 hours to remain, you would do it. One, to survive. And number two, to become a better member of human society. So next slide, please. So when they export orders, ground, we have to develop that new marketing plan. It was typical. I will not uh, mince words. It was a very, very difficult time in the life and in the world of YKK Philippines. And as I have explained to you, we went to a very systematic way of cutting down our costs. To make money, there are two ways of doing it. You work on your margins, and as you work on your margins, you try to also cut down on your costs. So if you can buy, margins is a function of how much you're spending. You cannot continuously increase price because you have competition. So knowing what competition is pricing their products vis-a-vis -vis your product, you also have to simultaneously look at every cost that you incur in the production of your product. And if you are in services, the same thing. So it's so basic. It's a constant process. Day in and day out. It's relentless. Wala nang katapusan. You always have to be on your toes 24-7. You have no time to relax. That's what business is all about. So in 2008, as the market was beginning to improve, and by the way, 2008 also was the year of the global financial crisis. However, by 2008, the Philippine banking system, and basically the financial markets in the Philippines, was ready for the big, big crisis that hit the world. We were hardly hit by the subprime problem of 2008. So at that point, I said, attack. Next page, please. We came up with a domestic marketing plan, and this is one of those that we use to do our marketing campaign. Can you kindly play the jingle? YKK Super Zipper Talaga Super Zipper YKK Zipper Fashionista Ba Super Zipper Go on Pinoy Words La Sativa Yag Ganda YKK YKK Sa Damit Pantalon Number One Sha YKK Di Ba Sa Bumuka Na Kasiti Yag Ka Kung ayaw mong mapahiya, mag-YKK ka. YKK World Class Zipper, Gawang Pinoy. Genuine YKK Zippers, now available at SRA Trading, located at 001 Central Alas Asin, Mariveles, Bataan. Puring Sewing Material Store, located at Building 4, Stall 298-299 and 327 Public Market, Tanawan City, Batangas. Next slide. This jingle went all the way to 2018, 10 years. And I tell you, it was a, I would say, big gamble. If you have noticed, wala musical accompaniment. It's all a cappella. A cappella. And, uh, Happy to say, extremely successful. Awareness and recall 100%. I say this not because you're listening to me today, because you are, whether you like it or not, my captured audience. <laughs> but the reality is, and is, or was, the market really picked it up. And uh, I recall uh, my friend who was riding a jeep 
But one of his employees decided he was even going to work. And there were several of them at the, inside the jeep. And one of the guys, the sleeper, was broken. And the kids who were seated across him started to sing the jingle. <laughs> so as soon as uh, that employee of my friend had gotten down the, the jeep, he immediately told his boss, Sir, it works. <laughs> but the test of the food, of the pudding, you know, is in the eating. And I'm happy to say that the reason why it was so immensely successful is because it was very clearly seen in our sales record. The phone did not stop ringing. Next time, please. So, while we had lost practically 90% of our export market, but because of very aggressive uh, advertising and marketing uh, campaigns, we were able to survive. And we even, I did tell you this, but we even added our capacity for manufacture of brass zippers. Ang Pilipino mahilig sa baong. Kaya I tell you, eh, Tom, Dick, and Harry, all your kids, young and old, mm, baong. And all the local guys wanted my zippers, the YKK zippers, the genuine. Because I tell you, the best compliment is when somebody copies your product. And I tell you, there were a few naughty, made in China, made uh, brass zippers. But they were absolutely lousy. So when people will come up to me and say, Hey, you're selling me a lousy product. I said, something in Lamo, something in Peke Hutu. Paano mo nalaman? Eh, kung na rin ang nagre-reklamo, nasisira. Huh? See, that's the thing about zippers. If your quality is poor, puli ka agad. Puli. Especially the ladies. <laughs> you're wearing a nice dress. Or even both uh, male and female. Especially for... Uh, Brass zippers. May ipi, bubu ka, bubu ke, kuli agad. So, after a few years, my team and I, the top one of them is basically here with us today, is Golden Domingo. I, I called them and I said, look, something is happening out there in the digital world. So why can't we do something about how we can use the digital platform in continuing our niche marketing efforts? So in 2011, we started digital marketing. In 2011, digital marketing was, hello? Nobody knew about digital marketing. But I sensed, and there was, again, the entrepreneur in me, sensing that there was something exciting happening when you all know today digital marketing is the buzzword so next page please i put together a team i was a team leader the boss i had a graphic designer i had a marketing man that i got from another company that started the, they were the initial distributors of nike he worked for a company called Mondragon Industries. An excellent marketing guy. So there were only basically two, plus myself, three. So we pioneered digital marketing. Next page, please. The objective basically was to find a way to strengthen our market position in our niche market, niche market. And uh, we developed 
several schemes, but basically all focused on the digital platform. Next page, please. We were so successful, so much so, that today, Philippine YKK is the center for digital marketing in Asia. So people come, they study digital marketing in the Philippines. And as a result of that, uh, the expertise that we develop has become a byword within the group. Because whether you like it or not, the digital economy is alive and well, as you all know. So again, we were able to adapt. Basically, in the spirit of Kaizen, continuous improvement, you have to always be attentive to innovation. You, if you do not innovate, you die. So there's a saying, to innovate, you have to think better, faster, cheaper. Always remember that. To be able to survive in the marketing and the selling of uh, your individual products and services, you must always innovate. If you don't, you perish. So just remember that. And when you innovate, it should be better, cheaper, and faster. Otherwise, your product will not be competitive. So next page, please. So, in 2017, after 40 years, I quietly retired from my KK. And uh, basically, it was a very, very fruitful, beneficial, and rewarding experience for me. So, I don't know how long I've been talking, uh, Professor Raymond. 40 minutes. I told you about 45 mm -hmm. minutes. So, uh, I can talk the whole yeah. afternoon. But uh, in the interest of time, because all of you, uh, this is a Saturday afternoon, and you sure you have your own individual schedules. But uh, I just wanted to share with you a glimpse of the 40 years that I've spent doing uh, my first business. And the success of my business was basically niche marketing. So this is a real life story that I shared with you today. I enjoyed it. Uh, during the 40 years that I had with YKK. Now, today I'm doing um, another thing. You know? I'm doing Toyota. But maybe I'll reserve that story at another time. Mm -hmm. And uh, how my group, the Laurel Group, we call ourselves uh, in the grand old name of my uh, beloved province, Mga Barako, Team Barako. So, uh, we are renowned in the Toyota Group. And again, my, my byword, which I was able to develop to a high degree, the byword is quality. So to conclude, thank you for listening to my short lecture. You're all, I suppose most of you are doing graduate work here at, uh, at the University of Espanol. My parting word for you is simple. Always be the best. No matter what you do. Aspire for perfection. I know you will never achieve perfection. But as the saying goes, you should not be content to be good. You always have to be better. I know, we all know that the best will never happen. But our quest for perfection should be forever. We are not perfect. We are not a perfect institution. Neither are we perfect beings. But our desire and our objective 
is to be able to achieve close to perfection. And if you have that basic mindset in your brains, you will achieve your own, your own successes, your own respective successes in your chosen career. When I graduated in 1969, our commencement speaker said, only 10% of you will enter agriculture. Only 10%. So we all looked at each other and said, what happened to me? Well, I was not the one of the 10%. I was one of the 90 percent. In my agribusiness uh, batch, apat kami, no? Iisa lang sa amin ang naging magsasaka. He's not here today because he's still running his farm in Nueva Ecija. No? That's why he is not present. So the three of us, including myself, are here. So, but that's reality. But it should not in any way discourage all of you to do what you want to do. Hindi mo masamang mangangarap. Pero kung kayo yung mangangarap, lubos-lubosin niyo ang inyong mangangarap. Because you have that distinct advantage. And what is that? Tapak you be. So, maraming salamat. And I hope you learned something from your talk. Um, the topic is about niche market. So I would like to know how you find your first customers. Um, I mean, how you enter the market to find your targets, uh, your customers. Especially when you mentioned in 2011, uh, when you start the digital marketing, how you find your customers. That's um, a very basic but um, very crucial question. Thank you so much, Paul. Thank you for that question. In 2011, just to go straight to the point, we started from nothing, zero. All we had was an idea. So we jumped into the world of virtual reality, the internet. And uh, through imaginative uh, work, because when you know that there's a market there, you use whatever is available, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. So my team of two, we created, number one, a website. Okay? A website. Nice website. And slowly but surely, people started coming in. And then we established a Facebook, a Twitter, and Instagram account. And again, things started to happen. So what am I saying? You just have to make the conscious decision of what you want to do. Nobody will tell you what to do. You have to tell yourself what you want to do. So again, it's what do you visualize? You have to capture that. In the real world, nobody will tell you what to do. You will have to tell the world what you want to do. That's reality, ladies and gentlemen. It's a merciless situation. There are no nice guys out there. The only nice guys are probably the people uh, inside the academic community. I'm sorry to say this. Academic institution is not the world. The real world is, is the crazy world is out there. And maybe that's the reason why uh, Professor Cruz, Professor Mark, has, has done all of these lectures to give you an insight of what really happened out there. So that's what we did. 
again, we went to basics. He said, how can we reach the people out there? He said, sir, let's create a website. Okay, let's do it. But the first thing I wanted to do was to create a good functional website. Not just a nice website, a functional website. Where you can have interaction. And the other way, which is always a very effective way of attracting people to come to your website, we have little rewards. We have little rewards. So you come, I, you, if Professor Mar was, uh, or Professor Raymond was uh, brave enough to love it, we will give a little price. Things like those. No? And from my own uh, experience, and we do the same thing with, you know, day in and day out at Toyota, a customer walks into the showroom. By the time he gets out, he has a little something. Doesn't necessarily have to be something big. Something. And that's, that's my understanding of my market. And interestingly, the first people that loved me were not only people in the Philippines, but Filipinos outside the Philippines. And slowly, it got, it spread out. So that's one way of looking at it. I hope I answered your question. It was very good afternoon. So uh, thank you for the thank you for the speech. From the speech, I think uh, we have seen how YKP survived and even thrived with the niche marketing. So my question is connected to your um, credentials in the Toyota. So my question here is: Does Toyota also target niche markets? And if so. Are there what are the strategies of Toyota in attacking the niche markets? Okay, thank you. The answer is yes. Uh, Toyota basically uh, does a lot of aggressive marketing, and today, like I said earlier, they have em well, uh, for your information, Toyota has embraced full strength digital marketing. We, they, they do a lot of uh, marketing activities in the, in the virtual world. Um, however, I just want, so want you to know that digital marketing works up to a certain degree. My Toyota operations is basically in the rural Philippines in the provincial areas, Batangas and in Bicol. Soon I'll have another one in Batangas in the town of Malayan. Social media, basically, is not as strong as it is in Manila, and Metro Manila, the big cities. Rural Philippines is still rural. So face-to-face, events are still very, very key in the success of your marketing program. So you have, uh, we effectively use uh, mall displays, we effectively use uh, town displays, we effectively use uh, radio, uh, TV, uh, occasionally. Uh, nowadays, not so much print. So again, you will have to balance it off. Certain areas, digital marketing works. Certain areas, not as effective. So you have to, again, read the market. Don't believe whatever you hear. You have to test it. And the testing is, again, daily. You see the movements. And if you know how to manage it well, you will see it immediately. And that's where your constant contact and coordination and communication with your management team and your people on the ground. And that's what we feedback Toyota. So there is a 
a wealth of information that we, the dealers, are able to create because we are we are the frontliners. Toyota lives and dies because of us. And we also rely on Toyota because, number one, they produce the cars, the, the great cars that Toyota has in the market for the consumers. So it's a symbiotic relationship. Sometimes good, sometimes bad. But that's the way life is. No? Today, nice. Tomorrow, not so nice. But we chose to be Toyota dealers. And they chose us. So we have to live with each other. No? I just want you to know that Toyota loves Mr. Laurel and hates Mr. Laurel. Why? Mr. Laurel is one of the best. No? I am one of the best. Especially in customer satisfaction. Uh, out of 25 years that I've been a Toyota dealer, I won the cup for excellence in customer satisfaction six times. So every four years, I win. The other three years, I number two. <laughs> Not bad, no? no I, I, I'm telling the truth. Huh? I am a living, breathing example of what customer satisfaction is all about. So they hate me because I tell them the things that they don't like to hear. But you know, that's good. Criticism is good for everybody. So when your professors or whoever your bosses are going to be, when you hear critics, I mean your critique, take it wisely. Take it humbly. Because that's the only way to be better. Remember what I said? Innovation? You got to be better, cheaper, faster. I hope I answered your question. So uh, thank you very much, uh, sir, for, for your presentation. Uh, well, I'm one of the technical guys who uh, is trying to understand management, so I hope my question makes sense. But uh, I want to understand better the, the thought process behind uh, using traditional media, which I would assume is expensive, in targeting a small uh, market you know when you try to divert uh, from the export uh, oriented business into a local uh, oriented business thank you i always look at marketing not as an expense i look at marketing as an investment you invest small or big it's an investment because you're promoting number one your little enterprise. Number two, your product. And number three, the, the, the end, of course, the, the end of, uh, objective is to be able to establish yourself. So it's not a cost. It's an investment. Divorce from your mind the idea that you're incurring a cost. When I celebrate that I'm wearing 25 years this year, I mean 25 years on my job, that's 25 years that we celebrated last October or November in Batangas, 25 years of business. We spent a fortune. So when my people are saying, sir, we are spending so much, I said, excuse me, I know what we are spending, but what we are spending for is for the next 25 years. If you look at the psyche of the market, the psyche of the market will always go and favor those that are established, those that have a trade reputation, and those that have served the market well. So you have to reinforce your market. And my celebration of 25 years, expensive as it was, is an investment for the next 25 years. And where I come from, and my fellow Batangueños are over there, they, and this is general, we love winners. We love those who have done well and have continued to be competitive and continue to survive. So, medyo off yung aking sabot, but take it from me. I've been in this rat race, or if you collectively look at it, 40 plus 25, 65 years. 
And I can very bravely say what I said. It's not a cost. It's an investment. If you believe in your business, you believe in your product, you believe in your market, you will succeed. Tataya ka dapat. Ibig sabihin mo. I hope I answered the question right. So I really like the statement when you mentioned that reading, reacting, and anticipating the market is really essential for a business to survive and thrive. As a marketer myself, uh, my question is, um, given the, fa the other fastening alternatives such as the Velcro, the magnetic um, snaps which I, I saw on your website, do you see these fastening alternatives um, replacing or becoming a threat to the most um, common product which is the zipper? And my question is, what would be, what is your, uh, what is the company's market anticipation um, in the future regarding um, um, the YAK company itself? Good question. To answer the first, the Velcro and the magnetic snaps are complementary products. They will not in any way weigh they or replace the zipper. Why? The zipper is a generic, generically is a product that has been around for I think six or seven decades. It's like the the, the tire of an automobile. The, the automobile tire has been there forever. And the, the zipper continues to be the mainstay. For as long as humankind is around, we will be using zippers. And uh, the snaps, the magnetic snaps, or the snaps, or even the Velcro, will complement. It's an add-on. Uh, as you can see, in some products, you have a jacket, and then, especially for winter jackets, to prevent the cold air from coming in, you just uh, apply the, the final uh, piece of the garment with the Velcro, no? so it, it will not replace. That has, was my experience during my 40 years in running YKK. Now, I forgot the, uh, the second question. Um, the um, market anticipation of the YKK company itself. Well, uh, I think I, uh, I answered that uh, uh, by way of saying that uh, for as long as humankind is around, zippers will be in demand. The, the name of the game is again, again, the maintenance of the highest quality standard of white oh. And if you know the Japanese, their perpetual pursuit for perfection is unequal. Uh, I stand to you today as a testimony to that statement. Why? believe in quality, quality, quality. Even in my daily operations today at Toyota, I will not release a vehicle, whether it's just general repair or body repair, if there is a problem. I'd rather be scolded, ako'y mamura na lang ng customer, hindi ko lang, basta hindi ko ilalabas kung may diferensya. So, Quality is a mindset. Unfortunately, you are in the University of the Philippines. You are quality students. And hopefully you will be quality graduates, no? which I'm sure you will be. And you bring that mindset with you forward when you ultimately dive into the blue yonder or blue lagoon if you choose to be in business. The most important thing is, it's up there. Never give up quality, because you will live and die with quality. Believe you me. I've been through it, I still go through it, and I continue to believe in it. So, sana nasa ko yung utang. Um, actually, the very I was interested in the last question that you said that if zipper will eventually go out of fashion, that's exactly what you wanted to say. I'm going to say 
the answer is the other way around. There are more products that are being created that needs fewer. For example, in the yachting, shipping, camping, more products have been created that needs zipper rather than the accessories which are the snaps and the uh, uh, Velcro. That's the answer there. Okay. Well, one, of the, one of the curious products that YKK produces is the zipper for artificial grass. If you go out into the modern stadiums in Japan, in the United States, in Europe, you will, you will hear of AstroTurf. That's actually synthetic grass. And the way they put together this synthetic grass is to the use of these gigantic looking zippers. The puller is a big, big lever. You just pull it from one end of the field to the other. The other one is uh, when there is an oil spill. When there is an oil spill, they have these huge nets that they circle around the slow moving oil spill. And it is fastened together by a zipper. So those, those are the little applications that uh, we see every now and then. And as what my, my number one boss and my number one believer, uh, and my, uh, my roommate, <laughs> uh, I said there are more applications now being created. So the demand for seekers will continue to be improving as time passes. But the, the underlying principle there is quality. If you do quality, you will, you will do well. Um, I'd like to ask, um, what are the common problems you encounter um, in looking in your uh, niche market? The problem is always a question of how quickly we can uh, deliver. That's the most common problem. Of course, price will always be a negotiable uh, factor, but that's easily resolved. Our biggest problem is always supplier, that is uh, the delivery time. Because in the case of, uh, especially in the case of exports, your number one challenge is always delivery. So if we deliver on time, they, deliver, they ship out on time. That's the number one problem. Quality has never really been a problem for us because we maintain the highest level of standards. And we have the people and the equipment and the technology to address that. So uh, if you look at it purely from a simple point of view, it's, it's part of the supply chain issue. So we cannot afford to have any delays, any delays. So our inventory management, starting from the most basic, is extremely critical. The problem in manufacturing, if you have one missing item, you are dead. So again, when I say I cannot deliver on time, it's because I missed out on some little, little item in the, in the warehouse or uh, my suppliers uh, have been remiss. So you have to look at every single facet. And that's the biggest challenge always in manufacturing. You miss one item, delay. So you have to be extremely circumspect. Always reviewing. And that's what the Japanese are also good at. You've heard of the term just-in-time? Just-in-time is a measure of management in being able to deliver the raw material or the part on time, which was mastered by Toyota. So, then this is even. And if you make a mistake, either you under-import or under purchase or you over purchase, you're dead. So again, how to master it is the key. 
That's the, that's the other thing that you have to know. So, uh, doing manufacturing is an extremely challenging management uh, uh, process. The question po is, Okay, we had a ton of competitors, but they were all addressing the domestic market. Second, the biggest advantage that I had, ang pinakaraking bagay na ang patano ako na may pagsapanalat sa kanila. Again, Haridan, quiet. My domestic competitors did not have the quality that was suitable na babagay sa exporter. Sila'y babagay lang. And mind you, kaya nga I emphasize, the demand for the domestic market in the early days was for metal zippers. Yung aking produkto, nylon zippers. Pumasok na lang ako sa kalagit na, hindi mo kalagit na, katapos ng sampung taon. Nung pinasokan namin, ang merkado para sa maong. Doon pa lamang, wala ako kalaban sa domestic market dahil ang kanilang produkto, aluminyo, yung amin tanso. Bakit? Pagkat ang tanso, napakamahal. Tanso, yun ay 70% uh, copper, 30% zinc. Yung zinc yung pampatigas. So wala akong kalaban doon. Kaya nga ako yung laging tinutukoy ko, kalidad, kalidad, kalidad. Yun ang pumatay. Yun ang aking pinagamit para patayin ang aking mga, mga domestic uh, competition. At ako, tandaan nyo ito. I will repeat it. In the in the market, it's merciless. You either live or you die. And if you die, sorry for me. And if I die, nobody will feel sorry for me. It's dog eat dog. I'm sorry to say, but that's the nature of the market. So die one of the biggest. Kaya nga ako ba tatawag eh. So you have to be strong, you have to be resilient, and you have to Number one, quality, quality, quality. That's how to fight. The best and only uh, cheat. What is it ko? Better, cheaper, faster. Thank you. So, that ends our Q&A portion. So, if you have any questions, you can have to save it for the Toyota installment. <laughs> Oh, we have programs. Okay, so you have we have all the programs. And that's also part of marketing. <laughs> you have to be flexible and provide all the programs that are available for the small cars all the way to the big cars. <laughs>